and you know everybody gone to bed now mm -mm -mm. in the night guy i got up i think it was before day about four o'clock in the morning i got up to use the bathroom when i step off the bed i was stepping in water i was like oh my god i started to call him i said the house is flooding out the house is flooding out i said come everybody get up hi my friends on youtube this is you know who right Hi guys welcome back to my channel this is audrey for all my new subscribers my name is audrey and um if this is your first time clicking on my video please subscribe like and share guys the more you share my video out is the more recognition i will get I'm asking you guys to like my video and if you haven't subscribed as I said before go ahead and do so now I thank you all for tuning in this is a little story time part two of my experience working in the Cayman Island guys it's a bittersweet experience you know working there with uh it it has it good and it bad i mean from my experience it wasn't that bad but you know other people that told me what went on with them oh my trust me it's it's always something you know when you leave your country and go to other people country to work it's always some there's always a story to tell because you think as human being people will treat you with you know love and respect and things like that no for what i heard from other people it was horrible i mean at times mine is a little rocky but you know it was good most of the time because you know you're from different cultures so it always you know you think people just open up their arms to you mm -mm. well thank god I, I met a family who opened up their heart and their home to me guys um the first my first visit was good they treated me well my first day at work even up and even after that when I go to work, they said, did you eat breakfast yet? Come on, come and eat with us. They didn't separate nothing for me. They just asked me whatever I want. I could eat, you know, while traveling on the bus with other ladies. I heard they said that, oh, they can't eat nothing there. The boss give them separate plates and cups and all of that. I remember my sister-in-law said to me, let me tell you this. If you're going to take someone in your home to work with you, make sure that it's someone that you love and respect. You have to love and respect that person. You're taking them into your home to prepare your meal, something that's going in your stomach. You have to love and respect that person. You cannot treat that person less than a family member because they are the one who have you know your food preparing for you your back turn you don't know what they would do to it so she said listen me anybody come in my house to work they must can able to eat out of my plate and drink out of my cup any cup that i have there because when my back is turned and they're preparing my food i don't know what they can do to it so always treat people with respect and treat people good and I learned that from her from that day on. It happened that even in my experience, you know, after leaving there, I remember I have people working with me, helping me with taking care of my kids. And guys, I treat them just like a family. Some things I heard people say what they did 
to people food i was like oh my god guys anybody listening to this if you have someone coming in your home to work with you and to take care of you and prepare your food please love and treat that person with respect don't treat them like they're nobody because when you're back turn you don't know what you're getting you understand treat them with love and respect i'm happy that i had that family working with that love me and treat me with respect and then guys i'm not the kind of person who will revenge people by doing stuff to their things no i'm not that kind of person i rather to walk away from them than do that because listen this world is on a wheel and what goes around comes right back around you know some people feel like oh that not what happened to me you'll never know even when you're old and you think that well okay then you know you have somebody there taking care of you they're not gonna do that they will they have a thing they call karma karma will get you I remember working there and uh, my boss used to give me the opportunity you know she gave me a she said make a list that you want and um she gave me a blank check she signed the check but there's no money on it and she said when you finish you can go shopping twice a week or whatever time it needed she will give me that check and um i used to drive i had my license thing and she said go ahead and um shop when you're ready in a vehicle just use a vehicle there and go get grocery and stuff like that and i can't believe this one time i went down to one of the stores because i had two stores guys i went down to one of the stores and um one of the workers said to me you know that lady don't like you that's why the work i said why but I haven't done her anything i mean i'm here i'm just humble doing my work why she don't like me because she's saying that the boss give you any vehicle to drive and she asks them to just borrow the vehicle to just run and do something for personal use and they did not give it to her and she was like how you are the help and you get vehicle to drive you drive any vehicle and i'm here working in the store and i can't get one of the vehicle to drive I was like what, what what is that you know why are you gonna eat me for that i care myself with a, a lot of respect and dignity for myself and in 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 that way people respect me also and i'm doing their job and they give me any vehicle to drive and she's gonna eat me because they give me any one of the vehicle to drive you see how people stay I can't believe how people are like that. You know, give you you're gonna jealous of me or hate me because I get one of the vehicles to drive. Come on, people. And you know, guys, I didn't pay that much mind because that's not me. I, I it, it don't really bother me. You understand? I went to do my work and that's what i I was there to do because I know my needs. I know my needs, I know what I want out of life and I know what I was facing. So I went and I did it to the best of my ability, guys. Anyhow, after that, I, you know, my mother took sick. My my kids was living with, with her. So, you know, I keep going back and forth. And whenever time it's summertime, I normally take them with me. And then on Christmas, I, I never like to travel on Christmas. So on Christmas, I normally have them come and spend Christmas with me and uh, guys after them after they come and spend holiday you know my mother took sick so one of the time i was like no i have to go and take care of my kids my mother passed before she passed i had their sister-in-law that um i asked her if she could keep them you know i rented a place out of the area that i was in i rented a place somewhere else you know nice community and um send them to live with her you know while sending money to take care of them and stuff like that taking care of my mother at the same time too and a couple months after that guy my mother passed it was a devastating moment and 
I that day when my mother passed, it was the same day the reggae boy qualified for a World Cup match. I'll never forget that. That very same day, I was there. I was there, guys, celebrating in the street with the, with other people, you know, rejoicing and thing. When I saw my boss drove up and called my boyfriend and said, um, you know, she was there talking to him. I didn't take it as anything. So because those time, you know, we didn't have we have cell we never have cell phone frequent like now. So most of time I took calls from yeah, they sometimes to call me on my boss phone or so. And um for them to call me they have to go somewhere to get somebody phone to use because as I said we didn't have cell phone that frequent. So anyhow guys he came and he said, um he hugged me. And said, I have something to tell you. I said, what? And, you know, he keep jogging. He, he always loved to jog. And I said, what is it? And he said, your mommy died. I said, stop playing games, man. You're too joking. You always joke too much. And he said, no, it was true. I was like, what? Guys, it didn't even hit me that time. Right? And uh, the couple days after because you know i went there and looked for her and came back shortly after i came back that happened and i was like no what is this and i look at that from that day guys and said i'm never ever gonna celebrate and and you know because every time that i'm happy and start to celebrate they're always a bad news and i said from that day on i don't celebrate like that you know because that was really devastating anyhow went and buried her and came back guys after coming back two weeks after i get back i remember one sunday evening i went outside and sat there and guys i just there's just this emptiness inside me i just miss her and i start crying and crying and i there cry 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 and guys probably if i didn't cry like that i wouldn't get a release Cause that helped me to you know release a lot of things that i had inside you know i wasn't talking and that helped me and guys let me tell you something after that i told my boss i think i'm i have to go to you know take care of my girls spend some time with my girls and stuff like that and they said you sure you don't want to get somebody to do it and um you can go and come you know back and forth and we can give you extra extra time to you know spend with them and so i said i think it's time for me to go and take care of them and guys i went they said you know what we could um give you six months to go sort them out and you know spend some time with them and come back because you're good workers and you know we want it we want you here and i said to them i'll see how it goes and i went down and i spent about two years with my girls and then i came back to work with them again two to three years i think i spent there and then i came back up again to work with them this time guys it was different because they wanted they wanted me in the store so i like um i think i went to the house like in the morning you know just to do a little errands and to do a little stuff and by midday i'm out of there back in the down to the store to work and guys from there on i started working at the store you know doing other different stuff helping out with custom and storeroom and filing and all different kind of stuff guys i used to do and i said you know what that time yes my that was an experience experiencing ivan hurricane ivan in the cayman island guys where i was living it was like a lake behind the house and uh, my friends was living like couple houses from me on the same road and we were like they said this hurricane is serious and it is coming and uh, I said, you know what? I'm not going to stay alone in my apartment knowing that the lake is right there and I don't know what to do. So all of us stay together at my friend's house and 
let me tell you something guy it was devastating it was devastating i was there and in the night we were there talking and laughing i said wow what is going to happen now and the rain started to fall and you know everybody gone to bed now mm -mm -mm. in the night guy i got up i think it was before day about four o'clock in the morning I got up to use the bathroom. When I step off the bed, I was stepping in water. I was like, oh my God, I started to call him. I said, the house is flooding out. The house is flooding out. I said, can everybody get up? And when we look, water gushing through the door, under the bottom of the door. Oh. Or anywhere water could come in, water was coming in. And we started to pack the stuff up, pack the stuff up high. I was like, no, we can't stay here when we look. And see the amount of water coming in, guys. They they lick out the the sheet rock in the in the ceiling, and uh, they put stuff up there like clothes and food stuff and so. And they put up there. Thank God the roof was good because if that roof had gone, <laughs> I don't know what would happen to us. And we were there on top of some stuff, and climbed through the window and on top of the some boxes that we had packed up out there. I watch water rising guys and I was like oh my god I can't believe I'm going to die like this I'm going to die I'm going to die this is how I'm going to die and you know we were there and I said calm down man calm down <laughs> anyhow um guys the water rise so high that we couldn't stay in the house anymore we had also go in the attic that's where we slept the night three days we spend in that attic three days when you look outside my company car was floating in the water their vehicle was every vehicle flood out every vehicle flood out after that hurricane three days after that i could get to walk down to my apartment guys when i went there my fridge was on the back everything was floating the only thing in that house didn't wet was my mattress because it was a bit that my apartment was a bit high and how it stated the bed it the bottom of the bed was wet but the mattress was the only thing that was dry so i said oh my god i went there and i clean up and stuff like that guys we did have no water they have some cistern that they they call it um well that they have under the house that they store water that was the only water we had and guess what guys it was mixed with the flood water and all we could do that was salt water because cayman is a small place and the sea came over and it was all salt water guys i bathed with that water for two weeks guys we had also drink coconut water because those people, they didn't like jelly. They were, you know, jelly is just mostly Jamaican who drink the jelly because they, they didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And guys, that was what we had for water. The jelly we used to drink for water. Everybody start gathering jelly now and drinking jelly for water, coconut for water. And you guys, that was an experience. And after two weeks, I went back to Jamaica. When you look on my skin, guys, you can't imagine using salt water to bathe. My skin was so rough. I was like, oh my God, when I went to Jamaica, I couldn't even go home the same day. I was to stop by my girlfriend and get, you know, just to fresh up myself and looking like somebody again. It was an experience, guys. And you know what? I went back after that again. I went, I think it was two years after that. I went back again with the same family. <laughs> guys, let me tell you something. It's a bittersweet, but I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. Because of that, I was able to build my business place, build my house. You know, the business place. And then by doing the business and I build my house. Guys, let me tell you something. In this life, it's hard 
some time for us to say, boy, oh, I went to school to do this and I want this kind of job. So it's not all the time we get what we want. Sometimes we have to work with something. And that's exactly what I did. I work with something and use that to make a living to support my children and help to support my parents. My mother passed off before, but my father, I was there for him. Yeah. You know? And I am so grateful, guys. I am so grateful. I'm going to end this video now. I don't want it to go any longer. I'm going to end this video now. So, guys, please like again, subscribe, and share. If you're just tuning in, if you watch this video to the end, please comment strong black woman or strong woman okay please comment strong woman i love you guys thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day bye